Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. We are going to be reviewing the new Colourpop So Very Lovely collection. I have the entire collection here today to review for you guys. I did get sent this in Pia just to let you know beforehand, but we have everything here. There's a lot to cover in today's video, so I have my full review on everything. I got swatches, comparisons, and also three looks. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and hop into the review. So let's start off with a quick little overview of the entire collection. So in the So Very Lovely collection, there is a 12 pan eyeshadow palette, three cream gel liners, four lippy sticks, and three super shock shadows. And if you would like to purchase the entire set together, full collection is 70 US dollars. And I do want to note that I do have an affiliated code with Colourpop if you guys would like to use for 10% off. I will earn commission in return if you do use my code, but you will also get 10% off your order. No pressure, that code is just there for you guys to use if you would like on this side. So I guess with that being said, let's hop into the palette review first. So we have a 12 pan, which I'm so happy about because 12 pans are just the OGs. It's what I love the most. It's like the formation that I feel like is the perfect amount and this is 18 US dollars and we have six metallics and six mattes half and half which I feel like is a very good balance. I think when I first saw this color story honestly I wasn't really that excited but once I started playing with this palette you guys like it might have to be one of my favorite color pop palettes I have tried this year because there is just so much you can do with this palette. I feel like when you look at it, to me, it feels a little bit scattered. Like there was a lot of neutrals and they just added like this pop of lavender in there. But honestly, I'll show you guys my three looks, a little preview here now. They all look so different from each other. So look one is very, I would say, rosy and romantic. The second look is very warm and rustic. And then the final look is the look I'm wearing right now. I have a mixture of peach and lavender. So I feel like there's just so many more color combinations you can do. And I didn't get to use all of the shades. I used everything besides this metallic in the corner. So you could do a whole color story with that shade in the corner there as well. So I feel like there's a little bit of everything in this palette, like surprisingly, like I really did not expect to love this palette so much, but I think it really has everything I need. Like it has the darker shadow to deepen out the outer edge, has a lot of colorways for a transition shadow. We get the warm medium tone. And then I think the metallics are really nice as well. I will say though, you know, I have a really big collection of palettes that this wouldn't be so hard to do and you guys will see in my comparisons that there are you know quite a few comparisons but again I think it's just for the colorway and the inspiration it gives you and of course the convenience having this color combo already set out for you. Um, I really don't think I would have ever done like a lavender with peach. I don't think I really done that. So this palette really did give me a lot of inspo and I was really happy with all the looks and everything performed well. The metallics are beautiful and the mattes are just mattes. They don't have that matte where they have the little glitters in there. Like it's just a matte like this. I don't know. This palette kind of gives me like old Colourpop vibes. Like I don't know. It doesn't look like old Colourpop vibes but I don't know, just the feeling that I had when I was playing with this palette, I felt very inspired and I really liked how the looks turned out and it's a palette that I want to keep on playing with. So in the end, I really did enjoy it. I feel like if you don't have a lot of palettes in your collection and you still don't want to like step out too far into the color zone, I think this is a really great one because you do get the pop of peach and lavender, but then everything else is more on the subtle warm tone size. Again, I do think there are a lot of comparisons which I'll put up here for you guys now so you guys can see what you already have in your collection and maybe you can already dupe this entire palette which I'm sure you can but I guess if you have a smaller collection then maybe not
So next up we have three crimp gel pencils and these are six US dollars each. If you want to get all three, you can buy it in a bundle for 15 US dollars. So these are in, I don't know if this is going to be their new packaging for their eyeliners. They're called crimp gel pencils now, so I don't know if the crimp gel liners in the retractable packaging is gone, but they came out with this in their Bambi collection. And honestly, I do prefer the retractables because it's easier to use, but then again, Again, the retractable ones are a lot more fragile and they break super easily and this one it won't snap off you have to sharpen this but I hate sharpening pencils like that's why I don't use lip liners uh, I just don't like sharpening things <laughs> I'm just that lazy three shades here and all of these have a metallic sort of finish um, they're not matte eyeliners but I actually really like these okay I'll talk about the one that's in my bottom waterline now and this one would have to be my favorite I would probably recommend this one out of everything it's in the shade lettuce lettuce lattice let me google how to pronounce that you guys for this collection there were so many words i didn't know how to pronounce like lattice. oh lattice lattice in the shade lattice i really like this this is like honey dude's metallic eyeliner and honey dude is their iconic nude eyeliner one of my favorites i feel like it's a really popular eyeliner from ColourPop. it's just a nude but this one gives a little sparkle to the eye and i really really like that i saw this girl on tiktok actually i can't remember who she was it was just on my for you page but she was talking about a charlotte tilbury eyeliner how it made her eyes sparkle and this kind of gives me that vibe but obviously Colourpop is way cheaper than Charlotte Tilbury so I feel like this would be maybe a good dupe for that I don't even remember what eyeliner she was talking about but I remember just seeing it on TikTok I see everything on TikTok so definitely this one is one of my favorites now and one that I would highly highly recommend and the next one is called Crochet this one is a really pretty one as well I feel like when I do more mauve pink looks I think I would go for this one on my bottom waterline I think just the metallic finish makes your eyes just sparkle a little bit I would say you just got to be a little bit careful because they do have like little fine glitters in there and if you are taking that into your waterline that can be a little dangerous so just keep that in mind but I really do like this one as well this would have to be my second favorite and then my least favorite one would have to be Macrane I just googled this yesterday Macrami. 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 Macrami is a really pretty color. I think when you swatch it, it is really nice. And I thought it would be one of my favorites. But for me, this one doesn't show up in my waterline. I've only used this once. I don't know when I did use it. My eyes were really watery. And maybe they just didn't, it just didn't want to go into my waterline. So I'll have to use it again. The day that I did use it, I feel like you couldn't see it. You know, like it was non-existent so um yeah i'll have to keep playing around with this one maybe i'll get back to you guys in my monthly favorites or something but yeah overall the creme gel liners are really nice i feel like they're more unique their shade range and their creme gel liners is so big like i have a lot of their creme gel liners you guys maybe i should do an updated creme gel liner video and swatching everything because i have so much now all right moving into the next category we have three super shock blushes these are eight us dollars each or you can get it in a set with all three for 21 US dollars and all of these have a satin finish um, so actually two is pearlized and one is satin I love Colourpop super shock blushes it might have to be one of my favorite things from Colourpop like their eyeshadows their super shock blushes and maybe their just a tint lip crowns would have to be my top three things from Colourpop no and their tinted moisturizer top four should I do a top 10 favorite of Colourpop because you guys these are honestly the best cream blushes like if you have not purchased a super shock blush not even just from this collection just in general if you haven't purchased a super shock blush you are missing out like I usually don't say that but like really you are missing out I'm not a person that really likes to play with cream products and I've recently played with a lot more cream blush formulations and I haven't used a super shock in a while and getting a fresh super shock blush is life-changing really like this is the most easiest cream blush to use you can use a sponge you can use a brush you can use your fingers they will look good no matter what a lot of other cream blushes I use always look patchy and I always have to figure a way how to use it and like you know make it work for me but this I don't need to make it work it's already working and it looks so good and these blushes well two of them I love like I love like 
The only downside of these is that it does dry out pretty quickly. I feel like a lot of the Super Shock blushes that I have kept have dried out and they're just not as great as they used to be. So that is the downside. Maybe purchase a color that you know that you'll use all the time um, and then use that up. But because it does dry fairly quickly, I would say probably within like a year. But yeah, let's talk about the shades because the shades are just chef's kiss. And I was really surprised because I didn't think that I would like their satin formulation, which I have used before, but I just don't know. I just, when I saw the shades, I'm like, they're pretty but I don't know if they're gonna be pretty on me you know so let's talk about the only satin shade this one is called Gorget I also googled how to pronounce this I think I'm saying that right Gorget but this one is a really pretty summer or spring blush it's very bright but it's not overpowering and that's the thing with the super shock formulation is that it's very very buildable you can get it more intense or you can get it just like a hue of blush on your skin and it just looks so good it's not patchy at all this is going in my top drawer now like I just really love a good blush you guys know I've been on a blush kick and this one is just really really pretty I love this one I would recommend and to my surprise this one Vole. I also googled this. Hang on. I don't want to mispronounce things. I have bad memory as well, so I like don't remember how to say these things. Voil. Voil. Yeah, it was voil. Why did I say vole? Voil. This one, to my surprise, beautiful color. This is pearlized, but to me, it's sort of similar to their satin finish. I would say it's a little bit like more metallic-y in a way, um, but this one looks so dark in the pan, right? Like it looks like it's like a brown but once you use a brush and dab this out on your skin it has sort of like a red orangey undertone so it doesn't really look brown and it's actually not too dark I would say it's definitely one of my darker blushes but I don't think it's too dark on my skin tone it just gives me a lot of warmth to my skin and I really love it I think it looks amazing this pearlized finish like this satin finish is stunning. If you guys know about the M Cosmetics Heaven's Glow blush, it's similar to that but in a cream version and I almost feel like I like this one a little bit better. I feel like this one just mounts into my skin. It doesn't enhance any texture. Not that the M Cosmetic one does. It's a baked powder. So obviously powder and cream, which one's going to look more like skin? A cream. So this one just like gives me that vibe and I really, really love this. And then the one that I really don't like <laughs> is the one that I'm actually wearing now. I wouldn't say it's a blush and I did check the pamphlet to see if this was a highlighter and it does say they came out with three super shock blushes. So this one is called Chiffon and it's a pearlized. And this one I would claim to be a pearlized because it has a lot of glitters in here and this one is a lot more like mushy and soft like putty feeling. This one I would say is either a highlighter or a blush topper. It's not a blush at all because that undertone, that peach pink undertone, you won't really get that onto your cheeks. You will only get the glitters and I feel like I literally just dabbed a block of like highlight just on my cheek where my blush is supposed to be. Um, so this one is a very glittery, so I guess depending what you like, this is a little too glittery for me. And the glitters is not really a shade that I would typically wear anyway. So this one to me is like not my fave. So now onto the final category, we have their lippy sticks. So these are seven US dollars each, or you can get them in a little kit, um, the individual shades for 11 US dollars, and it will come with a matching lippy sticks. I don't think you can purchase the lippy sticks individually, but you can get them in a set with these lippy sticks if you would like. I adore the lippy stick formulation. I'm really happy to see that they are still trying to come out with a new shades and I really like these. I really like all of them really. I think they well, this one that like I feel like doesn't really look that great on me, but we'll talk about each individual one as we go, shall we? So the one that I'm currently wearing on my lips right now is called Nice Things, and this one would have to be my favorite out of the four because it's such a me color, I feel. Like, I'm a sucker for anything corally and peachy, but this is a color I definitely would wear like on my day-to-day. -day. I'm actually going to keep this in my top drawer. This would probably have to be my favorite lippy stick color like I feel like I really like the lippy stick formulation there's not a shade in the range that has been mine you know but I feel like nice things might have to be mine now like I just see myself wearing this all the time it's a really nice pop of color but it's not too bright like it's still quite subtle and muted in a way so I love that. So this one had to be my favorite. The next shade I have is called Sweet Stuff. And this one is a really unique shade in my opinion. Like I do have some shades that's a little similar to it. But I feel like this type of shade 
do we see very often? It's like a purpley fuchsia color. I think on me, I just really don't like these type of shades on my lips. I don't like cool tone lips. So this one is pretty. It's a little bit more unique. Then we have Fab. Fab is another shade that I feel like a lot of people might like, but for me, these are the shades that I don't like on my lips. It's a little too neutral and dark, um, but I definitely could see this being a good nude color on a deeper complexion. For me, it kind of just washes me out. And then probably my second favorite in the collection is Soft Side because I love a good chocolate brown lip. And this one is chocolate brown. It's like a dark chocolate brown and it's perfect for fall. I feel like you get a really good variation in these lippy stick shades. And I feel like you get a good variation in this collection actually, because sometimes in their collections, the collection itself can already dupe each other. For example, the Stay Golden palette, which will be my next ColourPop review. I feel like a lot of the shades in there kind of already dupe itself. And sometimes when they release like lip colors, some of the shades are similar to each other, stuff like that. But I feel like with this one, you do get like a really good variation. Everything looks different from each other. So I really enjoy this collection. Yeah, with that being said, that is my review on the entire collection now. We can move into the three looks. I hope you guys will enjoy them. Alright, so hopping into the first look, I'm going to start off with the shade Rose Avenue and this is going to be our transition shadow. So I'm just going to work that straight into my crease using windshield wiping motions and then I'll use more circular motions to get this blended up towards the brow bone and also towards the outer corners. This shadow is such a perfect transition shadow, like it has this really pretty rosy tone to it but it's also very muted and I absolutely love that. So I'm also going to take that onto my lower lash line as well. I'm just going to sweep that from the outer corner right to the inner corner. And next, taking the shade Topanga Boulevard, I'm going to place this at the outer corners of my eyes to really deepen out the look. So this shadow is pure perfection. I only dipped in once and then I'm just working with what I have on my eyes. And as you can see, I'm just stamping on the product first and then I'll slowly start blending that outwards. And I didn't need to re-dip. The shadow is very pigmented, but it's also very, very easy to blend. And typically when it comes to a really dark plum, like this that is really hard to come by i think ColourPop does a really great job with their darker mattes because this one performs so well and i loved working with this so i'm also going to take this onto my lower lash line as well but i'm only going to focus it at the outer third and i'm taking that on a defining brush And now I'm going to take a mixture of Organza and Lace Up. I'm taking a little bit more of Organza, but I did mix the two. And I'm going to place this at the inner third of my eyes as our pop-off metallic shadow. This complements the plums and pinks so well. I think it's the perfect metallic shadow for this look. I'm obsessed with this metallic shadow and then I'm actually just going to take a lace up on a pencil brush and I'm just going to use this to highlight my inner corners but also the inner third of my lower lash line just to give that brighter inner corner look so now I'm just going to create my wing with my black liquid liner I'll go in with my black eyeshadow to help smudge extend and sharpen that wing out and then taking the cream jar liner from Colourpop from this collection in the shade crochet I'm going to use this to tie line my bottom waterline. I love this eyeliner too. I think it's so pretty and it does give like a pop of color with a subtle pink hue. And then I'm just gonna pop on my false lashes. I'm wearing Honey from Petite Cosmetics. And then just to complete the overall look, I'm gonna take the Super Shock Cheek in the shade Georgette and I'm gonna apply this on the apples of my cheeks and I kind of bring it down a little bit as well. But for my lip color, I'm taking the lippy stick in the shade Sweet Stuff. Alright guys, so this is the first look completed. I really love how this look turned out. I love how everything worked. I love the tones. I feel like this look is super girly and spring-like so I'm just really vibing for this look. I am actually wearing this on my birthday so I'm really happy with how my makeup turned out today. So I really do hope you guys like it as well.
So now onto the second look, I'm going to start off with the shade Craft Works, and this is going to be our transition shadow. So I'm just going to take this on a big fluffy blending brush, and I'm going to sweep that straight into my crease using windshield wiping motions. The shade is super light on me, so it's not as noticeable, so it does work as a really great base and transition color. So I'm also going to take that same shadow onto my lower lash line as well, just to give a bit of definition. Next, going into the shade Dream Catcher, I'm going to start working this at the outer corners of my eyes. Like the first look with that dark purple that we used, this one is really similar as well. It's very pigmented, you don't need a lot, so I only take it in one time, and then I'm just working with what's already on my brush. So just stamping on the product at the outer corner and then slowly blending that out and diffusing the edges. I will take the same shadow on a pencil brush and bring that into the inner third of my eyes just because the inner part of my eyes is a little bit folded so I want to make sure I'm getting this shadow all the way in and then I'll take my previous blending brush to diffuse and blend that out we're going to be doing a halo eye for this look so that's why we're focusing it on the outer and inner portion of our lid I also take this onto my lower lash line as well but I'm using a defining brush to press that up against my waterline Now taking the shade Tea Time, I'm going to wet my brush and we're just going to apply this to the center of the eyes. I think it's a very complimentary shade to Dream Catcher. But to enhance even further, I'm going to take the shade Braided and I'm also going to be using my brush wet as well. And we're just going to place that right at the center of our eyes. You can see I'm holding my brush vertically so that way it's going to lay just like sort of like a stripe almost but then we're going to diffuse that out. I'll take a little bit bit of braided onto my lower lash line as well only at the center I just want like a little peekaboo of gold on my lower lash to match with the halo eye so now I'm taking my brown liquid liner I'm just gonna create my baby wing and then I'll go in with a dark brown eyeshadow to smudge extend and sharpen that wing up you guys know the drill then also taking the cream gel pencil from the collection in the shade McCrumby and I'm gonna use this to tight line my entire bottom waterline and then I'm just going to pop on my false lashes. I am wearing the Boudoir Lights from House of Lashes. And then to complete the look, I'm taking the Super Shock Cheek in the shade Voil. And I'm just going to use my sponge to apply that directly onto the apples of my cheeks and blending that back into my bronzer. Alright guys, so this is the second look completed. I love the overall warmness from this look with the brown lip. This look is giving me a lot of fall vibes. I'm here for it you guys know me I'm always gonna be a warm tone gal at heart so I really like how this look turned out I like how everything performed so yeah I really like how this look turned out and I hope you guys like it too So now onto the final look, I'm going to start off with the shade Eyelid and I'm going to take this on a really big fluffy blending brush and I'm just going to take that straight into my crease using windshield wiping motions. This is going to be the base color and I still want to see this at the end of the look so I'm going to bring that up towards my brow bone and also towards the outer corners so that way it's just that base color that we're going to see. So we're also going to take this onto our lower lash line as well. We're just going to sweep that from the outer corner to sort of the middle of the lower lash line connecting the shadows at the outer point And next, taking the shade Tabanga Boulevard, I'm going to take a little bit of the shadow. I'm actually going to dust some off the back of my hand just so I'm getting just a tiny bit of this color because it is very dark. And I don't want to deepen out my outer corners too much, but I do want a little bit of definition. So I'm just taking a little bit of this and just working that into the outer corners of my eyes using circular motions just to deepen out that outer edge. I'm also going to take this on a defining brush, also taking off a lot of the product on the back of my hand and then applying it on my lower lash line just pressing it up against my waterline only at the outer third And next, I'm going into the shade Macaroon. I'm going to take a flat brush and I'm going to start packing this onto my lid. So this is sort of the technique that I like to call like a soft cut crease. Like we're not really cutting out the crease, but we're cutting out the crease with a light 
eyeshadow so I'm going to be a little bit more precise around the crease area but I still want to like diffuse it out if that makes sense I don't know and then I'm just gonna take a little bit of collective I'm using like a natural head brush so it doesn't really pick up a lot of the metallic like a synthetic wood so I'm gonna take a little bit of this and I'm really just picking up more of like the glitters and I'm gonna place that where the lilac shadow meets with the darker purple so that way we have a little bit of like metallic glitter on our eyes but it's also gonna help blend in those two shadows together so now you guessed it I'm going to create my wing with my black liquid liner and then I'm gonna go in with my black eyeshadow to help smudge extend and sharpen that wing out and then I'll take the lattice cream gel liner from the collection to tight line my entire bottom waterline now I'm just gonna pop on my false lashes I am wearing the boudoir lights from house of lashes complete off the look I'm going in with the super shock cheek from the collection in the shade chiffon this one's more of like a blush topper or a highlighter it is super glittery and then for my lip pairing I went with the shade nice things all right you guys so that is going to complete the final look I love the color combo with the lavender and the peach I feel like I haven't done a color combo like this before so I'm here for it this is just giving me a lot of spring vibes and I feel like the eye look was super easy to do but it's still impactful at the same time so I really do hope you guys enjoyed this final look And that you guys was my three looks. Be sure to let me know which look out of the three was your favorite down below. I think mine would have to be maybe this one just because of the color combo, but I really did like all three looks. I think they all turned out well and the color stories were really nice, very monochromatic, you know. So to slowly wrap up the video, I thought I would give you my favorites and my recommendations from this collection. The first one would have to be the Crim Gel Liner in the shade I forgot how to say it. Latisse? Latisse? You guys know what I mean. You guys know what I mean. This one I just feel like is going to be my new nude color because it just gives your eyes a little twinkle, a little sparkle, and I feel like Colourpop doesn't have a shade like this, and I don't have a shade like this in my collection either. And then I will have to go with the blushes. I think these two blushes are just going to be staples in my collection. You're going to see me use them so much. And then I'll also have to go with the uh, lippy stick in Nice Things. You're going to see me wear this a lot, like trust me. When you check my description, you're gonna see this one a lot. And then the last thing I would recommend, like if you have a small collection, then I would recommend So Very Lovely. It's just to me, I do have a bigger collection, so I do have, you know, a lot of similar shades individually. But as a palette as a whole, like I really, really did enjoy this. So yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for sticking around. If you guys did enjoy this video and you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate it so much. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!